Hello everybody, well I wanted to finally do a review on my Barska spotting scope. Um, I know that sometimes we, you know, in general we want to buy a spotting scope, sometimes for either shooting, or for me it's shooting, but you know, animal watching or nature watching, photography and stuff. And it's very difficult to find something that's affordable and also gets you what you want. This Barska scope is uh, kind of big, so it might not be something that someone wants to carry you know, for five hour camping hike or something like that. There's probably smaller ones that can do the job as well. And also, of course, quality is very important. C quality in the clarity of the image is actually number one above all. I don't care if you pay 50 bucks or you pay $500. If the clarity of the image is not good, it's garbage. Um, I've bought some scopes that are $40 brand new and they are fantastically clear up to 75 yards after that they start to get a little bit ugly and um, so and I'm a 200 yard 400 yard 500 yard shooter now so uh, you know something that's 75 yards is pretty boring and worthless to me so I stumbled onto this Barca spotting scope because I saw it on eBay for like 80 bucks with shipping and uh, ended up being one of the best things I could ever bought and of course Barca has a uh, um, some very low-end scopes for under 100 bucks or around 100 dollars and this one here generally sells apparently sells for about 250 to 350 depending on where you get it so i'm going to give you uh, i don't even actually this actually doesn't even have a name to it you know how some scopes have the what the celestron or the celestra the the colorado for example or something one that i remember um i don't think all of them have names but some of them do have names um, as far as spotting scopes go in general, but this one does not. And I'll give you the number, uh, you can read the description below and you can, or the title, and I'll give you the actual spotting scope uh, uh, number of this Barska scope. And so this must be a little, a little bit slightly higher end one, I guess. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's really fantastic. So what we're looking at here, we are in Trona, California. Um, that is a couple thousand mile, <laughs> miles, a couple thousand yards or something like that, because I've got my spotting scope or my uh, uh, rangefinder that hits a thousand yards, my Bushnell, uh, I can't read how far that is. And I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to take the phone off my uh, the uh, the scope, and I'm going to show you exactly pretty much about how far that is uh, just on plain sight. Now, this is in the afternoon. Um, it's a little bit warm, not too bad. but uh, And it's a little bit hazy out there, so the image on the phone might not be as good as the image of you of me looking at it through my actual eye and the scope uh, that's another thing you have to remember when you do a review is that maybe the phone won't record as nice as you actually seeing through it and the only reason i'm actually re re doing this review is because i think this scope is really quite fantastic and it, it is still decently within the price range i think affordability and uh, again, if you happen to stumble on this particular scope on sale somewhere and you see it for 100 bucks or less, maybe $90, and you think to yourself, oh, man, what am I getting for $90? Is it going to be like a cheapy one or am I going to, you know, get a deal? And, you know, so you want to know what you're looking at because uh, you might be getting a great deal like I did. Now, if you look at my other videos, I am shooting at a thousand yards and uh, I'm using the spotting scope on that. So you can get a pretty decent idea. Again, uh, it, it, how well it is in the haze, it could also depend on the weather. Um, I don't know what a thousand dollar scope will do for that kind of weather conditions. But uh, it, this is a really great scope and I'm really happy about it. So let me go ahead and remove it from the, uh, the scope. And that's what you're looking at. We, that's our camp right there. That's, that's us all the way to the, to the right side there. So you can see pretty damn far. Uh, here we are in Trona. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and here's the scope here. It's got the uh, shoulder strap. It came with a, you know, with a box. That's another thing you have to look out for. Oh, when they say, uh, Oh, it comes with a box and a tripod and a strap. It's like, don't get fooled by scopes advertising junk like that because in the end, you're going to need a bigger uh, tripod anyway, a better one anyway. Um, so don't get fooled by the so-called bells and whistles. Another thing, this is the uh, 60, 2060, 2060, um, uh, 80 or 2060, 2060, 80. 
Uh, I'll look it up right now. But 206080, which means it has a 2060 zoom, which is a standard, very, very standard. There are some that are less than 20, some that are a little bit more than 60. But in general, 2060 has always been the standard. And you were looking at it at maximum maximum range. Okay, you were looking at the maximum zoom. The focus is right here. And it's got a bit of a shade thingy here that you can move. You show that. Okay, I can't move it right now. But in any case, ah, oh, so you see? It has a shade just to provide a little bit of a, a shade from the sun sometimes. So this part can go in and out. Again, not something you can you should be fooled into believing that that makes it wonderful. The size of the 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 twenty sixty eighty is a bigger uh, a bigger lens. Usually in the past it was twenty sixty sixty, which was a smaller lens. But a bigger lens basically allows more light to come in. For those of you who uh, do any hunting or shooting or photography in low light of the morning or in the afternoon. Uh, a scope like this with a, a bigger a bigger lens in front there is uh, assist it helps you but again don't be fooled by the bells and whistles of they're offering you 90 100 oh my goodness it's a giant eyeball if it's not clear at x distance at x distance could be for you 100 yards 50 yards 200 yards whatever if it's not clear it's garbage okay so don't be fooled by the bells and whistles uh, let me pause for a second. I'm going to take off the protective cover. We're going to take a look at the actual scope itself. Okay, so we're back. So this is what the scope actually looks like. And again, uh, see, 206080 is what it says here. 206080. So that means, like I said, this is an 80 on uh, the front lens here. I forget what they call it, but anyway, that's what that means. Um, look at the texture of the scope. It's pebbled or rough. And look at this design here okay now I'm telling you that because like I said this scope has no name particular name to it so if you look at the design of it it'll tell you oh and if you find something for example you're at a yard sale or something and, or offer up or eBay again like me and you'll see this it's like oh that's the one that's the one that's the one if you like my review anyway so this is pretty cool here you release this click you hear that click you can go you can turn it that's pretty neat so if you're you know if you're if you're uh, shooting and you've got this uh, mounted on the sideways you can turn the scope sideways so that you're looking at it as opposed to standing on the scope so that's what it looks like. So now, give me one second, and I'm going to... You saw what it looked like all the way zoomed in. Now, I'm going to pause the video and zoom out all the way to the 20 power. Okay, so now we are at 20 power, which is the most... Uh, I can pull back on that and that this is why some scopes you'll see with 15 power or 18 power or something like that because sometimes people want to be able to shoot something that's closer and uh, I think a lot of times that's for like bird watchers or animal watchers or maybe even insect people who want to take pictures of flowers really up close and things like that and so uh, um, that's why they have low less than 20 power but 20 by 60 that's how they, that's why they have lower so in any case i hope the image is as clear as it is when i'm looking through it because i think it's really great now sometimes in super super hot weather um of course the image isn't going to come out super super sharp at a long long distance and sometimes the edges can get a little bit uh warped along the the very outer images uh, edges of the of the ring here of the circle and so again um, I don't know how good a thousand dollar scope is compared to this, but uh, I cannot afford a thousand dollar scope and I wouldn't buy one. Um, but this one here, if I broke it, I'd cry, but you know, I'd bite the bullet and buy me another one because I really do, um, really do enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, it's great for shooting. I love photography with it up here in the desert like this. And uh, 
I enjoy it a lot. So I hope that uh, I don't think I've seen a review of this particular spotting scope. So I hope that my little review, uh, un what do you call it, unsolicited, it's just me sharing my unprofessional videos on my YouTube channel here because of things that I don't find on YouTube that maybe I want to put up so that just in case another Joe Schmo like me, if we need one and we find a video like this one and uh, you find a, one on sale just in case, look at the design that I showed you. Go back to the video and look at the uh, the particular design of it. Now there is another one, Barska, that's the 2060 60. It looks just like this, but obviously the front end of the scope is is smaller. This is a 206080, okay, and I would recommend 206080, uh, just because that's the one I'm using. And again, if you find yourself in low light photography, um, landscaping of any kind, or animal, flower, whatever, uh, low light will uh, um, can affect your photography. And a, an 80 uh, 80 millimeter is a little bit better than, I guess, your 60 millimeter. So, in any case, just look out for the 206080 Barska spotting scope, and I'll tell you the number in the description. All right, thanks again. Bye.